Hi, my name is Brandon Locker, and today I'll be talking to you about what caused the 2016 oil bust. Um, my article was written by Clifford Krauss. <coughs> um, first, he started off with uh, some of the probable causes. He went through the uh, United States and Saudi Arabia's conspiracy about them trying to force Russia and Iran out of the oil market. It also, he also talked about how OPEC, which is um, <coughs> the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, and their lack of control over the amount of oil being produced by these countries. And then he also goes in to discuss um, how the demand for oil is falling as a whole, uh, going through all of these. Uh, the U.S. and Saudi Arabia conspiracy is basically that the United States and Saudi Arabia are supposedly working together to try and force the price of oil down by overproducing oil to force Russia and Iran out of the oil market. <coughs> so that they can make a higher profit and control more of the oil uh, industry. Um, OPEC, uh, Krauss says that <clears throat> the only recommendation OPEC has made during the entire oil bust was that they wanted to freeze output levels where they were rather than reducing them or holding them at any time, which all that's gonna do is take years to counteract the surplus that they've already created. And then uh, the demand for oil is falling based upon the fact that homes that use gas heating and cars are becoming more efficient using less gas and oil to uh, be run. Uh, some of the background in this, uh, the drop in oil price per barrel um, is caused by the world supply of oil on a daily basis of millions of dollars per day, millions, millions of barrels per day, sorry, is uh, 97.23 million barrels per day that is what is uh, supplied while 95.23 million barrels per day is demanded. So that means two million dollars, two million barrels of oil a day are made surplus, and that's forcing the price of oil to drop at a substantial rate. Um, and it's also led to about 250,000 layoffs, and that was just in the first month alone. That was not updated um, recently. Um, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Uh, the winners in this are people who drive automobiles and people who use gas to heat their homes because obviously the price of gas has fallen if you've noticed the pump, I'm sure we all have. Uh, the losers are the oil companies and then the employees of those companies because with layoffs and people being fired, uh, uh, oil companies can't afford to stay in business with these low oil prices. Um, the answer to this is just simple economics. The law of supply and law of demand. The law of supply is defined by Al Erbar as the quantity of a good supplied rises as the product, as the price rises for that good and vice versa. And the law of demand it also defined by Erbar is as the quantity of a good falls, the price of the good rises because there's a higher demand for it because there's less. However, the oil com the oil companies are not following this because Saudi Arabia and America have both, can, both continue to produce oil at the same rate regardless of the decline in price because they're trying to sell more to cover their losses on the loss in the price of oil. Uh, some of the solutions that I, I came up with on my own were that OPEC could limit the outputs for each country <coughs> based upon the fact that there's a $2 million, $2 million barrel a day surplus. They could reduce that surplus and therefore uh, restore the balance of supply and demand, increasing the cost per uh, barrel. And also some countries, if they decided to, could also halt production for the time being in order to uh, cause the surplus to decline and therefore balance out the supply and demand, increasing the price of oil per barrel per day. And those are my sources. Thank you.